Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome back again to another mental health check. Your struggle is part of your story, so celebrate every victory. Yes, I know you guys are looking and thinking, hey, it's just you again. Yep, it's just me again. You remember last week I talked to you guys about grief and that Mandy has been dealing with her uh, sick baby. It's, it's her baby. And so she hasn't been able to be here. But, you know, I don't know. Some of you may and or may not understand this or know this. But when you're suffering from something like that, like grief or those types of things, one of the things that happens oftentimes is your body has difficulties too, your actual physical body. So not only, you know, are you dealing with grief, and especially for those of us that deal with mental health issues or struggle with those things. And you guys know that Mandy has um, had issues in the past. She is my professional here with regards to mental health. And she, you know, has taken courses and done all those things. But not only that, she's lived it. I've lived it as well. And um, not, not, of course, as detailed as Mandy has. So that's why she is our, um, well, basically our professional, like I said. But, you know, I appreciate so much that you guys have been patient with us and just understanding that she's dealing with some things. Now, her uh, doctor has asked her to take some time to rest. She's not allowed to do anything for the next little bit here. So this past week, she's basically been on bed rest because she's suffering in her actual body now. So not only has she been dealing with, you know, her little baby kitty, um, which he is, well, we think that he is doing better. You know, there is, uh, according to the veterinary association, there is a 10% chance that he can get better, but you have to be very diligent. So Mandy has been very diligent in taking care of him and giving him all the medicines that he needs and stuff like that. And, and it looks like he's getting better, but in the process, it's been difficult on her actual body. So today, what I wanted to share with you guys is reducing your vulnerabilities. You know, I, I mentioned that last week when we were talking about grief and stuff like that. And I, I mentioned how it's important to reduce your vulnerabilities. So today we're going to be talking about that specifically. So if you guys would just you know, listen through, we would sure appreciate that. If you're hearing us right now, I'd love it if you would just like and subscribe to our channel, our Facebook channel, our Facebook channel, sorry, our YouTube channel. We would sure love that. Um, I do know that if you click the little thumbs up button or the like button, it does change color. So if you want to see that, click that today while you're watching this video. Anyway, so today, like I said, we're, we're talking about reducing your vulnerabilities. So let me just read some stuff to you. Um, this is uh, our teaching or a writing that I found that I thought would be really, really good for all of us dealing with, you know, uh, struggling with our vulnerabilities are so high and, and you know, we're just dealing with each thing that we have to deal with, it can be really difficult. So um, let me just read some stuff to you. Are you finding yourself in the pits of despair? It's a dark place I've become all too familiar with in the past. And it is a true story there. Perhaps you are feeling that your situation may be even your battle with mental health itself is hopeless. And like lots of us struggle with those things, that's your tunnel, sorry, that your tunnel doesn't come with a light at the end of it. Many heroes of faith faced the same type of despair and anguish. 
you're feeling today, or even our Mandy that we've been talking about. Job, as one of the heroes of faith, he lost everything, and I mean everything. And if you want to read about that, check out uh, in the Bible of Job chapter 3, uh, verse 26 is specifically where it talks about that he lost everything. But there's a lot that goes along with that. David, as he struggled with his weakness in Psalm 38, 4. Elijah, while on the run from Jezebel from 1 Kings 19, 4. Even Jesus sweat blood in anguish over his looming death and separation from God. If you want to read about that, that's in Luke chapter 22, verse 44. Take heart in knowing you are not alone and be encouraged. What we focus on grows. Interesting. Despair is often driven by our thoughts, focusing on our struggles and obstacles. So as uh, we intentionally switch our focus from despair to our God-given right to live in joyful confidence in Him. Now, um, John 10.10 10 speaks specifically about that you know we have a future and a hope and all of these awesome things so check out those things we begin to ignite that light in our tunnel the psalms are a beautiful illustration of how david kept bringing god's love and mercy back into focus despite his battles with despair so you may be going through a battle of despair. You may be going through a rough patch in, in your mental health and stuff like that. But know that you are not alone. And if I had the ability to do that right now, I would put up the little thing that Mandy always puts up that says, you're not alone. But remember that you are not alone. God loves you. We love you. There's, there's people out there that stand for who you are and love you focusing on how God has helped us oh uh, sorry helped us overcome in the past because he has and in his promise to be sorry and his promise to be with us now is the very renewing of our minds that Paul calls us to do in Romans 12 2. It is moving our thoughts from being feelings which lead to being shaped by the truth of the word of God. So now listen to this. This is the promise and it comes from 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9. And it says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. So that is a promise for you guys, that no matter what, God is going to be right there with you. So, you know, it's important for you to reduce your vulnerability so that you can remember that promise, so that you're not so overwhelmed by all of the things that happen in life that can take you out of that spot where you can't even see the promise anymore. So re the word vulnerability specifically refers to the quality or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed, either physically or emotionally. So in reducing your vulnerabilities, it's so important. So I have uh, three things here that you can do or you can think about to reduce your vulnerability. Number one, uh, take breaks. When you need a break, when you need to stop, take a break. Stop. Just take a break. Take the time that you need. Number two, not allowing things that are harmful to not take root in your heart and mind. Okay? So, you know, being positive and thinking to yourself, you know what? I am a winner. I am going to win this race. I have what it takes. 
Don't say things to yourself like, I'm a loser or I'll never amount to anything. Don't say those things. This is how we reduce that vulnerability. So some of us maybe have the vulnerability that says that we are losers or whatever in our in our own hearts or our thoughts or our minds or whatever. It's where you have to say, no, I am a winner. And number three, by resting when needed. So this is a big one right there. And, you know, like I said to you guys, Mandy has been struggling with a lot of things dealing with grief dealing with all of those little things here and there and so one of the things that she is doing to reduce her vulnerabilities is resting she needs to rest her body her physical body actually needs to rest so i'm going to give you guys uh, a little prayer that you could say if you want to and then i have one more last little thing that you know, I was thinking about today and it just really hit my heart. So here's the prayer. You could say something like, Dear God, I do feel pressed, struck down, anguished, overcome by the darkness of despair. I do not want to live in this place though, God. I want to live in joy that has been promised to me. Help me to move my focus from my situation to my salvation, from my feelings to my faith, from my trial to my ultimate triumph. It's hard to renew my mind. I battle my mind constantly. Strengthen me, guide me, and remind me to keep my focus fixed on you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So you guys, I know that some of us have gone through difficult things and stuff like that. And it is important to reduce our vulnerabilities. It is important to remember that no matter what, you are not alone. And something that struck me so hard today, okay? Now I want you guys to remember this. This is probably one of the most important things that you will remember today. Write it down. Keep it as a mantra if you want to. But remember, you have survived 100% of your bad days, okay? And in my books, me, in my books, that means that you are strong. Have the best day. We love you guys. And if you want numbers to call or you're looking because you need help, then check out our um, description in the box below and it will give you phone numbers that you can call. Okay? Love you guys. God bless you all. Have the best day. And remember, you are a hero. You are a survivor. Bye for now.